Good morning, everybody. This is Madonna from Mad Bees Quilt and Sew, and I'm here to share Demo December with you, which means for the next three mornings, I will be on, uh, I'll be um, recording at 10 a.m., and then we'll live stream, no, we'll stream this later in the day for anybody who isn't able to make it. So this is not a live stream, which means I can edit. Um, so we are going to be doing three different projects, and once you've completed all three of those, you will get the embroidery files to be able to make the jar toppers. They come in two different sizes. There is a large size for the large mouth and there's also a smaller for the regular size uh, mason jars. Um, and I'm hoping that we can get it in white before then. So all I need you to do is comment to say that you were here and then we'll keep track of it. If you are physically here on Thursday, we'll be able to download that design for you um, right onto your USB. Otherwise, we will um, get it to you via an email um, later in the week. So um, easy enough. If you can watch, that's awesome. Today, the project, the demo that I'm going to do is for this cute little basket, and it's a Buy Annie's product. And the product comes in a baggie, and it has your soft and stable in it. It has the instructions in it. It has all the parts, and then you just need to add the fabric of your choice. Um, we do have these little kits in the store. They run $5.25, so they're not outrageously expensive, especially when you figure you're getting your pattern with it also. So that's pretty sweet. So we're gonna get started on this. The instructions say that um, we're gonna cut our piece of, um, I do like recording, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to cut our piece of soft and stable, actually larger than our pieces of fabric. So on the instruction sheet, right on the very front here, it tells you exactly what to cut everything. And it has you cut the um, fabric slightly smaller than the soft and stable because they have you do a stitch around the entire outside edge of it first. Okay, and that's what we're going to do first. But I'm going to show you a trick to start off with. Soft and stable has two sides. One side is kind of a rough, grippy side, and the other side is like a flannelette on it, okay? And if you actually take this to the ironing board and press it first, it's going to hug better for you so it won't shift during the sewing process. So we're gonna just give it a nice little press. Hopefully my iron's hot. Yep, hot enough. And at this point, it actually does not matter that I am not perfect in my lineup. So this is actually going to be trimmed to the size of the fabric. So even though it's a little bit wonky on here, that's okay. We sew an eighth of an inch all the way around it just to hold it in place. Okay, which side yes. is, which side is we, that? We pressed it to the flannelette side. Okay, and um, it's sewn then with the um, soft and stable to the feed dogs, and I'm stitching at an eighth of an inch. If you have a Bernina machine, I thought I had another foot out here. Um, the eighth of an inch is actually that little notch right there. I thought I had 37 or 57 foot out here I could show. I don't know where Chloe put it, but I'll sew this first seam and then I'll show you. So it does kind of recommend using a stiletto with that if that's something that you're comfortable with using. Some people will actually use a seam ripper to hold it in place to make sure that they're staying at that eighth of an inch. But I'm pretty comfortable with where I'm stitching at. So I'm right at about an eighth of an inch from that outside edge. And I'm gonna go all the way around. Did you find it? <laughs> okay, so on your foot um, and Almost all um, quarter inch foots have this little notch on it. So there's a little bitty notch right there and that's at about an eighth of an inch. So see your needle's gonna be direct center and then that little notch right there is about an eighth of an inch. Okay, there's that little cutout right there. If you line up to that, and that's what I lined up to. And I'm gonna go around all four sides on this. And as I said, it doesn't matter if it's not square now. We're going to square the fabric um, up. We're gonna use the fabric as our guide. Gotcha. 
So I know that many of you have tried this, but how many of you have mastered sewing with your left foot? Yay, yay. Okay, so I want you to try it. I want you to start playing with it. It makes your posture so much better when you sew. It's amazing how much longer you can sew if you can use your left foot. Because when you use your left foot, you're no longer leaning into your right hip and then you're sitting up straighter and your whole back feels so much better. Okay, when you sit in the car, we all drive with our right foot and we sit in our right hip. It's just the natural way to do it. But if you can just learn to sew with your left foot, it's amazing. I am the queen of my foot control sits in the center. And if I'm getting up this way and I sit back down, I can sew with this foot. And I've got up that way, I can sew with that foot. Mine depends on where I can Yes. Where it fits in the space. Yeah. But you'll be surprised how much straighter you sit up if you can learn to sew with the other foot. Okay, so I've sewn all the way around the outside perimeter, and now I'm going to trim this up. Sorry, TV people, you don't get to watch for a second. Uh, where'd the ruler go? I brought it over. Oh, I took it back to trim. Okay, we are going to trim this down. Maybe I can turn this. <laughs> We're gonna trim this down to an eighth of, um, right to the outside edge of our fabric. If you have a walking foot and you want to use that, that's a perfect opportunity to do that. Just thinking you should turn that. <laughs> yeah, minor details. <laughs> That's kind of Now, we are going to mark the back side of this. And um, I will tell you right away um, that if any of you know me, I am the queen of making any mistake that there is possible, okay? <laughs> there it is, okay? We're gonna mark the backside and we wanna mark it clearly. We also wanna mark clearly the spots that we're going to cut out so you don't cut the wrong sides, okay? If you cut the wrong sides when you fold it together, they line up really nice next to each other but they don't close. Duh. Okay, so in our instructions here, on the first piece, we're gonna be marking in two and a half on each side. So if we just take our ruler, line it up to the outside four edges and mark. Remember, this is gonna be on the inside of your basket, so no one is going to see it. No one's gonna care that I used a regular pen on here. Are they? No. No. You don't want to you don't want to use a friction pen. It's going to go away with the um, heat of the iron in a minute here. Um, I would prefer a pencil. If I was going to be doing this at home, I would use a traditional pencil. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and sew on these lines, actually on the lines. It is going to give us really nice creases to be able to fold our bag on, and that's what makes it sit so very square. You can elongate your stitch a little bit, but I'm actually going to put my fabric down to the feed dogs. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Right. This is what we want to see there is the bottom. Go. Okay. I forgot. Um, we want to put our fabric down to the feed dogs because we don't want it shifting, okay? So it's going to sew and uh, mark much easier on the foam side. And since we press that, it really hugs it nicely. Um, I'm going to elongate my stitch a little bit. So I'm going to take my stitch just a little bit longer because I'm only using it as a pressing guide.
Greetings. I should put my phone on and play my new song. My snow, snow, snow. There is a very cute um, YouTube video out right now. Um, and I don't know if any of you recognize the name, Sharon Boyton. She does illustrations on children's books. And she um, illustrated a very fun Christmas um, quartet um, singing, a, a, a Christmas song that I'd never heard before. One more. <laughs> okay, so we have cross haired sewn in our um, little gritted design. This is where um, it's easy to make the mistake. You want to cut a quarter of an inch outside of this sewing line into this area right here. So it's on the two short sides, not the two long sides. So here's A, this is wrong, B will be right. The other night I was um, embroidering and I was embroidering that at the same time that I was making this and both of them had operator error. So then I stopped and went and read a book. <laughs> I actually chose to draw this, can you grab me a pair of scissors? In the quarter of an inch. Because it's easier for me to actually see it than to just guess it. Because you do want a nice quarter of an inch. Hey, Deanna, my really nice Karen K. Buckley ones are down the hallway. Oh, those are. seems really far. <laughs> it seems really far. <laughs> Thanks, honey. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I drew in the quarter inch. Okay. It just makes it, yep, I drew in the quarter inch. It just makes it much more visually um, able to see. In this pattern, there's one little tricky spot. This one seam, we are going to. Um, so at a half of an inch, every other seam in here is a quarter of an inch. So when I put this next part together, we're gonna to be at a half inch. This is not the time to use a rotary cutter. If you overcut, there's no way going back. Then you have a do-over like I did. Are you laughing at me? Dress her up, but you can't take her out. Yeah. <laughs> and like you should talk. <laughs> okay, so this is what I'm left with. Oop, I didn't get that one. Watch. <laughs> okay, we're going to put this together, right sides together now, and we're going to be sewing these two outside edges. So here and here. And. This is a great time if you love those wonder clips, that's a perfect opportunity to use those. You also want to make sure that you're back tacking on both edges of this. That's why I got them out, wasn't it? I know. These are um, cheater wonder clips. I need you in my small room. No thanks, just here. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I can't go down the hallway. <laughs> you know, you think you have everything ready, but mm -hmm. then, well, you did have it ready, technically. Technically. <laughs> we'll go with that answer. And it's all just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, look for a half inch on your sewing machine, because that's very different for us. 
but you have to do it because otherwise your proportions that you're cutting out will not match up. So you've got to make sure you're at the half of an inch. We're going to come forward and then we're going to back tack just a couple stitches. And once we get to the end, I actually really enjoy back tacking because I think it makes things look really nice. You never wind up with those ugly threads right at the ends. They're back and hidden. I know, but I already have a pile going over here. She's saving those threads. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use them to repair things later today. <laughs> you never know when you'll need them. <laughs> exactly. I demoed a machine one day, and the lady, every time I pulled a thread through, she saved them. She lined them up on her oh. pants. She was taking them home to use them for mending. Exactly. Mm -hmm. well, like. I'd never be able to find that thread, okay? It would be gone for days. Okay, so I am going to press this open, and I'm going to press it with a hard press, okay? I kind of want to smash this seam down. So one of the tools that I grabbed today from my house, as you can see, I use it, is one of these um, seam strip sticks. Okay, this one's called the strip stick. They come in three different lengths, or we carry three different lengths, but we can order the largest one for you also. But it's um, wood in there, and then it's just slightly curved, so whatever you have in there is sitting higher, and you're not getting into any of your other seams. It's great if you're doing multiple seams where you want to open them up, and you keep pushing that other seam, and it keeps turning on you. So this is just a great way to be able to have that. and I truly am going to push on it. I want to smash that a little bit because foam has memory, and so I want to change its memory. This is also a time where um, we use Roxanne glue Roxanne glue can go onto that seam, just a couple dots of it, so that that way you can um, smash it and it'll hold in place better for you. So now I've got it good and smashed in there, and you can see it still wants to jump back out. Once we sew it into place now, it's going to hold nicely. Because we drew and we sewed that quarter inch line there, we're going to use that as our sew line again. So we'll be able to make sure it's all nice and neat. But I would definitely take my fingers inside of here and make sure that all of those seams are upright because otherwise you'll wind up with a little tail sticking out in there. And it's easy for it to happen. Again, we're going to back tack. I always sew off the edge when I back tack, so I want a, a stitch or two to go into the negative zone before I come back. A lot of people stop before the end and back tack, and then that very corner isn't all the way closed on them. I'm gonna take a peek. Oh, I can live with that. <laughs> Make sure my corners are pulled out. And um, if you look at this basket, you'll know why I say that, because I can see a little corner on one side that the fabric just got tucked in just a hair. Probably nobody else would notice, but I'm going to notice. Am I going to give it as a gift? Absolutely. They'll never notice. <laughs> exactly. And that faux... Um, topper on it's really fun the full little binding okay clean up my thread so it looks all pretty thanks for putting this over here Deanna <laughs> 
So I am the um, most left-handed, right-handed person you probably ever meet. So I don't always know which side things go on or where they should be. Some days are just like that. Okay, so now I have a really nice square base and it squares itself up very nicely because we put all those in. Can I take this to the iron and just give those bottoms a good press right now? Yes, it's just gonna help them to lay even better. Um, once it's into the basket, it's almost impossible to press. Actually, this sits really nice. I like it. That looks really smart. Okay, so now we're on to the lining. And the lining is virtually the same thing, except we're going to start with a 10 by 10 inch square. That's what's going to give us the overhang for the rest of it. So I've got my 10 by 10 inch square of fabric. And um, I'd give it a good press if I were at home. And um, if you're going to spray it, if you want a magic spray, you know, um, put sizing on it, whatever, do it before you cut it down to your 10 inch square because you don't want this to shrink up on you and it not be 10 inches. On the second page of the instructions, it now has the measurements for the um, lining and they change. They are three and a quarter and three and a quarter and then the two sides are at two and a quarter. So it does change the instructions on that portion. So I am going to draw on the back side. Oh, look, at, I didn't even put a marking pen here today, didn't I? Sometimes I'm just smarter than I even remember. Oh. I did. Three and a quarter. That's cool the way that moves. Uh, it's meant to be for like people who move like bike and do things like that but this is the same mm. <laughs> are you comparing me to a biker that's really scary <laughs> <laughs> three and a quarter three and a quarter two and a quarter and two and a quarter mm. i've only made the outside of the basket twice not the inside so i have to check the measurements Okay, and make sure we do this right. Again, we're gonna cut out the smaller pieces. Hi, thanks. Did you decide I didn't need those anymore? I don't. Okay. On this, hi. In the instructions on this, we actually are going to cut directly on the lines for our two smaller pieces. Okay, so for those two pieces, we're gonna cut right on the line. The last ones we cut right next to the line. Let's make sure we're right here, yes. We gave ourselves the quarter of an inch because only that one seam gets cut at, um, gets sewn at a half inch. Everything else is at a quarter of an inch. And again, you can use your rotary cutter, I cannot. I am not that talented to stop that perfect. Once again, we're gonna put our right sides together then and sew the two outside edges. On Mackenzie, oh no. In my bag right over there, right there, there's a bottle of the ultimate glue. Okay, so we're going to take it and we're going to fold it together. So we've got it looking like our T again. And we're gonna sew the outside edges here. And we're only gonna sew those at a quarter of an inch this time. So only that one time. And if you can remember that, this project is really rather easy. I um, didn't back tack on the first one and I should have. Sorry guys. There is a stamp. Uh, yeah, that will work perfectly. Thank you. Uh, there's one of those. Nope, go grab one um, by SY Nona for it. There's one right by the long arm. I'll bring a product with me tomorrow. I forgot I took it out to do the um, poinsettia with. It is not a product we carry in the store. We can't. 
Um, it's actually called the Ultimate Glue. They used to carry it at Hobby Lobby. They don't carry it there anymore. You can order it online. Um, it is my heavy duty glue, but it's permanent. So like Roxanne washes out with water. Um, I'll pass this around and you can feel this one seam. It has the Ultimate Glue in it and it's holding, but it's pliable. It's not um, stiff and hard. Thank you. So Chris, if you don't mind grabbing that, feel that, but it's called the Ultimate Glue and I'll try to remember to bring it with me tomorrow. I had to glue the last part of this last night and I took it out of my bag. Okay, so we're going to follow the same step like we did the last time. We're gonna pop this open now and we're gonna make that nice little mitered um, edge here. Again, I'm gonna take this and press this with the iron to pop open that seam. Using my seam stick, it'll just slide right in there. Doesn't that feel nice? I mean, it doesn't feel like you've glued it. To hand sew, sometimes those spots like that, you can feel it and totally see it. I think that that did a, a nice job on it without it being real goobery. Sometimes I even just glue it into place and then I'll hand sew it so that way I know for sure that it's gonna stay. It's nice to have it glued to help this. Right, exactly, to help you, you know, to be able to get it into place. Because when you're trying to hold on to that little bitty seam that's open, so the hard, that's the hardest part of this whole basket is that you have to leave a spot to turn the whole thing through. That's going to be done right now, right through this corner. You don't want it to be in that top edge. You don't want it to be in that seam that's gotta be turned under. So this is the spot that's going to make the most sense. But that's also really small. I mean, this is what we'd normally leave open, but you can't leave all of it open because then you can't get it to turn. So I'm matching up my um, seams here. I'm going to um, stitch across this line here. And again, I'm gonna put it so that that's at the bottom, making my corners look really nice. And I'm gonna put this underneath here. And I wanna back tack, thank you. And when I go ahead to do this now, I'm gonna come forward and I'm gonna go in reverse, just get a little reverse on there so I get the corner really nice and crisp. And when I come forward again, I'm only going to go about an inch before I put it in reverse again because I need to have an opening. And I just did three stitches in reverse. So I only have about a one inch seam right there. That's all I've got is that much. I'm gonna to come to this end then and do exactly the same thing because I need that opening, but I want a corner. And that's why it's really important on that seam to make sure that you back tack your um, side seam also. So this seam, make sure it, this one here, make sure you've back tacked because you're going to be pulling everything through that little bitty opening right there. So that little bitty opening is what everything has got to go through. Oh, right, okay? <laughs> but you've got to have something there holding those corners because otherwise you're not gonna have pretty corners on the inside of your basket. Okay, on the other side, the other side is easy. We just sew across. We back tack on either end. Remember the saying, baggy on the bottom? So my bottom edge seems like it's just a hair bigger, so I'm just gonna put that one to the bottom, and that way it'll absorb it in. Your feed dogs always pull where your top always pushes. Get it up and underneath there at your quarter of an inch, come forward a stitch or two, and then back it up. So I hear lots of people who say, when I start off, I have goobers at the very beginning of my seam. Um, that's because you're not holding your threads. So I leave a thread tail always, and I um, always hold on to my threads. It just stops from having any uglies within those corners. Our machines are designed to catch that bobbin, and sometimes it takes two or three times to catch it and that's what makes the ugly piece there. So now I have beautiful corners there. It's 
gonna stand up like a pretty little basket. Looks nice, actually. Okay, it is going to go together, right sides together. I didn't have to turn that. Right sides together with our basket. If I can figure out how to do right sides together. We're gonna match up our side seams. If you have a tray table that you can remove, remove your tray table. You stole my clippies? Mm -hmm. Can I have them back, please? It is going to be taller then. It is easier to put the lining on the outside of the foam than the other way around. If you put the um, foam, it is uh, more stable than the fabric is. Um, it, you wind up with many more gaps in it. So we can see we've got a little bit of fullness there. I'm just gonna pull tight so that I even it out. I'm gonna pinch in further and that's where I'm going to put a clippy. That way I've eased the fullness in through those sides. Pull on it, give it just a little tug, come in here, pinch it, and put a clippy. I'm then going to put this right onto my sewing machine and sew all the way around at a quarter of an inch. Okay, I can see that I have a little bit of fullness, so probably my quarter of an inch wasn't perfect. I'm gonna ease that in right at that seam. Because if I do it any place else than that seam, it's gonna look really obvious. If I were at home, I would probably be using a walking foot, which I probably should have grabbed for today, but I didn't. Try to let your machine pull it through. A lot of us want to push and pull too much as it's going around and around. That's exactly the same on this side. I like it when they're matching bad. <laughs> right, then it's a, now it's a design element. When I get to this part, part that I started, I am going to just sew over a couple stitches and take out and trim. The best thing about this is that quarter of an inch matters, okay? But if you're a little bit heavier or a little bit thinner, you've got enough lining to turn. It's making that faux collar is what that extra fabric down here is doing. So we're gonna go to our opening now and we are going to push all of this through there. You thought it was never going to work, didn't you? <laughs> the worst part is um, trying to press the lining afterwards. Um, if you have one of those little mini irons, it'll sit right inside of there to be able to press that nicely. And then I would use the outside edge of my um, uh, sewing board to be able to, my ironing board to be able to get the rest of it. But see, since we squared that up so nice first off, it stays really nice and square. We're going to then tuck our lining into it and you're going to see how it just gives it that little quarter inch lip to the whole thing all the way around. Pretty gosh darn fun. 
So a couple things we can do to this um, then is we can top stitch right next to this. After I give it a good press, I can go in and just top stitch all the way around it. The other thing I can do is into these corners is I can just run two stitches. Go in, put it in, pull it out, and that'll keep that lining sitting nice and crisp inside of there. Okay, um, you can hand sew that opening close, or like I showed on this one, we just went in there and glued it with the ultimate glue and it keeps it soft and malleable. So you can actually either hand sew through it or um, just leave it that way. Most likely the person that gets this is not gonna be machine washing this, okay? They're gonna use it for a couple of years and they're gonna you know, get rid of it. So, I mean, it just depends on what your finish technique needs to be. But I do think top stitching it will just make it look that much more finished. Oh, That's what I have for you today. Now let's see. That was 45 minutes from start to end. Think how many of these you can make, okay? And I had to carry on conversation and I didn't have to dance today. So that's kind of good um, for everybody, for everybody. Um, what else can I tell you about here? So um, again, you need to show up three days or you need to respond three days that you've been paying attention. I do have kits available for the foam with the, um, the instruction sheets and for five dollars and 75 cents or 525 it's pretty good oh you got numbers for me you got names signed in okay right. no, I said bye to them. yes okay everybody have a great day we'll talk to you soon bye now see you tomorrow